How's it going everybody? Hopefully you're doing well. I wanted to touch on this, and I mentioned this in my video yesterday, talking about feelings about Black Lives Matter. This video here from Marcellus Wiley, Rick Buchter, I think that's who that is. Haven't followed sports in so long, but I believe that's who that is. And then Emmanuel Acho, unfortunately, went to the University of Texas, so we're going to have to cut his scene out of there. Sorry, Mr. O, but... So watch Marcellus here talk about what he feels about BLM, and then I'm going to get into several other articles and sources. A lot of you have probably seen this video. We'll just watch his segment, though. Marcellus, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. Is this a good idea? Ah, uh, it's not a good idea. Um, I do want to give the players credit for their flex to even get this to be more than just an idea, but something that's going to be in reality. I give the players that. Um, but there's a problem with when you start to go down this road of the freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and how much social space is allowed for those who don't support in that same space. And that's where I, I wonder where this is going to go in terms of identity politics. We know what identity politics does. Uh, it, it divides and it polarizes. No matter how you want to look at it, that's just the effect of it, no matter how great the intentions are. And we all know the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So it's an interesting play right here. I don't know how many people really look into the mission statement of Black Lives Matter, but I did. And when you look into it, there's a couple things that jump out to me. And I'm a black man who's been black and my life has mattered since 1974. And this organization was founded in 2013. I'm proud of you. But I've been fighting this fight for me and for others a lot longer. Two things. My family structure is so vital and important to me. Not only the one I grew up in, but the one I'm trying to create right now. Being a father and a husband, that's my mission in life right now. How do I reconcile that, what I just told you, with this mission statement that says, quote, we dismantle the patriarchal practice. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. When I know statistics, when I know my reality, forget statistics. I knew this before I even went to Columbia and saw these same statistics that I'm going to read to you right now. That children from single parent homes versus two parent homes. The children from the single parent homes, this is in 1995 I was reading this. Five times more likely to commit suicide. Six times more likely to be in poverty. Nine times more likely to drop out of high school. Ten times more likely to abuse chemical substances. Fourteen times more likely to commit rape. Twenty times more likely to end up in prison. And 32 times more likely to run away from home. I knew that. You know why I knew it? Because a lot of my friends didn't have family structures that were nuclear like mine. And they found themselves outside of their dreams and goals and aspirations. So when I see that, or as a mission statement for Black Lives Matter, it makes me scratch my head. When I also see their mission is to eradicate white supremacy. In 2020, white supremacy is the mission. Woo, that's a lot of digging through minutia right there. I am on a show that I'm hosting along with another black guy who is hosting with me who replaced another black guy. And that's just one example of it. So I understand I respect your space. I respect what you're protesting for. But will you respect others who don't support that same protest? That last statement, right? Will there be respect for others who don't agree with what BLM thinks and is pushing on society? And I really liked what he talked about. Obviously, the statistics are what they are. That's what I always say. Interestingly enough, statistics are now a thing that they claim are racist or discriminatory in some way. Statistics are what they are. And... I don't know much about Marcellus. I like how he lays it out there, though. His friends that didn't have that structure versus him. This man went to the Ivy League, got that Columbia degree. I assume he has a degree. Again, I don't know his history. I assume he graduated from Ivy's because most of the time, guys that go to Ivy's don't graduate early and get drafted, right? So I assume he's got that degree. Well-spoken dude. Great family man, it seems like. What's not to respect the NFL career, obviously, so money-wise, he should be set. But check this out in terms of those who disagree and where their space is at. Players Union call on WNBA to remove Kelly Loeffler as Atlanta Dream co-owner. She is a representative from the state of Georgia and I guess a co-owner. They want her removed. Wow, what did she say? What, 
Did she say the N-word? Did she say every black person should be owned by a white person? Did she say every black person should be in prison? I mean, God, she must have said some horrible stuff, right? She must have said some really racist stuff. Let's see what she said. At WNBA should stand for and unite around the American flag. <gasps> oh, no! Not around the American flag! Not divisive political movements like BLM that unapologetically seek to defund the police. There you have it, folks, for suggesting that a bunch of Americans living in America unite around the American flag. Oh, she must go. Well, to answer your question, Marcellus, where's the space for individuals who disagree? Oh, it's apparently it's over there in the corner somewhere. Let's see what some of the tweets are from some of these tolerant individuals within the league. Enough, out, yada, yada, yada. She wants to have a conversation with you about the matter, if you're down. If you're down, maybe, what do you mean? What, is, what does that mean, if you're down? Well, a conversation about the matter? About what? Wearing an American flag on your jersey? Okay. At WA, hmm, great question. At WNBA must do better. I don't know what that's about. Either. Oh, here we go. Get her a week out of the league. Oh, there's your disagreement. She has no place in the league, apparently, for disagreeing. So there you have it. Those are just a few of the individuals out there tweeting at her. Look at one more thing she wrote here, though. Loeffler wrote that promoting a particular political agenda undermines the potential of the sport and sends a message of exclusion, and that we need less, not more politics and sports. And that's according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Less politics and sports, more sports and sports. Outstanding. What a, what a concept. Interestingly enough, this must be the most buzz the WNBA's generated in quite some time because, you know, I don't know how many of you have ever seen a WNBA game, but I've seen some of those highlight clips they put together on YouTube. They're obviously bloopers and stuff, but it's it saddens me to see the product that's put out there. We'll just put it that way. Let's see what else we have going on. This is from the BLM site directly. Here we go. And this is what Marcellus talked about some of the ideologies and things that they speak for and to. This is the part that he was talking about here, and Terry Crews talked about this in his interview with Don Lemon, kind of saying, okay, if your platform's really about police brutality, talk about police brutality, right? But when it starts to degenerate and take on so many different things, then why wouldn't you be about what the mantra says or what the saying says, Black Lives Matter, if that's what you're trying to tell me, even if that wasn't the intent. And it, maybe the problem is that the intent originally of the organization was police brutality, so why not say Blacks Against Police Brutality as your organization name? The name itself, I think, is what causes the problem for people. So when you're trying to say this, then that's when it's easy for the other side to come with the counter-argument. So it says here, we make space for trans brothers and sisters to participate and lead based on the individuals who started the organization. You know why this is an emphasis, but should that be sisters and brothers to participate and lead? Brothers and sisters, are they... Maybe that's interchangeable, I don't know. We are self-reflexive and do the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege and uplift black trans folk, especially black trans women who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. Again, I'm just, <clears throat> call me crazy or call me confused on this, but black trans women, is that a woman who thinks she's a man or is that a man who thinks she's a woman? I, I don't know. Somebody's going to have to lay that out for me. I just... I guess I'm confused. We build a space that affirms black women and is free from sexism, misogyny, and environments in which men are centered. We practice empathy. We engage comrades with the intent to learn about and connect with their contexts. And remember the terminology comrades. I know we say it jokingly, but what was going around recently was that they're all Marxists, that they're, that's their ideology. 
Comrade's probably a carefully chosen word there. We make our spaces family-friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work, double shifts, so that they can mother in private even as they participate in public justice work. Okay, I mean, that's not so bad. Nobody wants to have to have their parent work a double shift. you got to spend some time with your kid. But uh, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. And that's what Marcellus was saying. Where's the fathers? Where's the mention of the fathers? So... When you have all of this stuff going on, when you go ahead and break the family down, regardless of what race we're talking about here, when you have a breakdown in the family structure, here's what happens. Atlanta mayor drops a reality bomb. It's not police shooting up communities. It's community members. And this all jumped off after all those shootings in Atlanta, all the protests. And it led to a situation where an eight-year-old girl was killed and a three-year-old boy as well, not sure if he was there in Chicago, but a lot of young people were getting shot to where the Atlanta mayor finally said, that's enough. And no shit, you dumb bitch. You were the one out there driving this. You were the one out there telling the community how horrible police are. Why are you trying to have it both ways now? Did she finally wake up one day and realize what the actual problem was? Or, oh, is she just bored of the whole defund the police thing and now she's ready to go ahead and point the finger where it really belongs. And that's within the community, lack of accountability. We are shooting each other up on our streets. Brilliant, way to tell us what we knew all along. They say Black Lives Matter, you killed your own. Sicoria Williamson? Oh, so that's a father. Father of eight-year-old, Sic what? Sicoria Turner? So he named the kid, <laughs> he named the kid the same thing as his name, but he spelled it differently. Am I pronouncing that right? You guys got to, you guys got to let me know. Are they both named Sicoria? Sicoria? Regardless, man. I mean, come on. Kids are out here getting shot. <sighs> I know we joke about Black Lives Matter and the fact that they're a joke, but nobody wants to see anybody out here getting killed. And then fingers getting pointed, saying the police are the problem. Maybe they're in part some of the problem in a different way. But when you don't call people out for their BS, this stuff keeps happening and happening. Remember, remember this from Chicago? This was just about a month ago. 18 in 24 hours. They say that the number of unarmed black individuals who were killed by police each year, or say the most recent year. I've heard it was nine. I heard somebody saying it was up in the teens. Chicago did that in 24 hours. The most violent day in 60 years in Chicago. Who are these individuals here? Uh, who are these individuals? We're not going to read the whole article, but I'll link it, of course, in the description. A hardworking father killed just before 1 a.m. A Westside High School student. Two hours later, a man killed amid Southside looting at a cell phone store? Here they are. This maybe this is the father here. I didn't read the whole article. There you go, Mustafa Abdullah there in the center. Looks like, let's see, a young woman here shot. She lived, it looks like, fortunately, shot at her own graduation party. Is this a mother here? Hit in the chest. There's the heat map. Keeps on going and going. Killed while visiting. This gentleman here. This young girl. 18. There's somebody else. Normal people just like me. Out there in the streets. Now, I'm not going to act like I know all of their stories because I just kind of skimmed the article. I just wanted to show that to you. And this was a month ago, so a lot of you have probably already seen this. And I'm not directly tying this to BLM, but that shooting in Atlanta, the one in Provo, 
the Chaz, stuff like that. It was possibly BLM or Antifa type individuals. It's like I always say, and I'll leave it here. This shit saddens me. It sucks. Most of these people, again, I don't know their stories, but most of the people out there getting killed are just innocent victims. And I don't like to see this happen. But when you have a situation where people are out there pretending and gaining all of this money and failing to point the finger at the real problem because they're scared, and make no mistake about it, these individuals, these pro athletes, WNBA here, pro athletes, if you want to call them that, little little jab at them. I'm just messing with them, but NBA, NFL, all these celebrities out here pretending. They're out here pretending and acting like the real problem is police brutality. Sure, we can take that issue up, but until somebody has the balls, one of these athletes to come out, high profile individual, until one of them has the balls to come out, like Marcellus did, and step up and tell people what the real problems are and how to make change, you show me that individual and that's somebody that I'll respect. I'm not going to respect any of these clowns out here faking it, grifting, making millions of dollars off of this stuff. It's ridiculous. All right, that's all I got. I'll just leave it here with a little something for you to look at. These are companies that have supported BLM. Partialist. Pause it here. Tell me it's not about money. Tell me they really want to solve the actual problem that plagues not just black communities, but communities where you would say, and I would bet a lot of these communities are on the lower end of the economic rung. So it's not just one race. You tell me that somebody's out there that they really care about individuals who are struggling to make it in life who have these problems in their neighborhoods. You tell me this isn't why they're really doing it. Take a look at the money. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.